Hello Scene Peepers. Welcome to Scene Recap. Today I would like to share a 2015 South Korean romance film called The Beauty Inside. Spoilers ahead, take care, and enjoy. The plot of the movie focuses on the life of Kim Woo Jin, a 29-year-old furniture designer, who wakes up every day in a different body. He will be a handsome man one day, but once he sleeps and wakes up the next day, he can be an old man, a kid, a woman, or even a foreigner. After being used to his peculiar condition, Wu Jin adjusts his life by owning various clothes and accessories to accommodate the days. He also can socialize and meet people since his appearance is changing every day and has to rely on the internet to earn money. The only people who know about Wu Jin's condition and don't judge him are his best friend, Sang Baek, and his mom. It is later revealed that this condition started when he turned 18 and he doesn't know how and why it happened. He then lives a different life after he drops out of school, and stops dating. If not because Sangbae keeps coming, Woo Jin will have no courage to tell his best friend the truth about his condition. Fortunately, Sangbae accepts the fact well and they keep being friends. Years later, they even work together as business partners, building a custom furniture brand named ALX together where Woo Jin designs the furniture and Sangbae sells it. One day, when visiting a furniture studio, Woo Jin meets Yi Su. It is love at the first sight. He is so attracted to her that he comes every day to the studio in different faces just to see her. On the other hand, Yisu doesn't know that there is the same customer who comes to her store every day with different appearances. Wu Jin waits until his appearance changes to a handsome man. He gathers his courage to come to Yisu's store to ask her out. At first, Yisu hesitates and rejects him, but eventually agrees to go out with him for dinner. That night, Wu Jin takes Yisu to his workshop, telling her that he works for ALX. It is later revealed that Yisu has been admiring his work all this time. They eat dinner together. Then, Wu Jin accompanies her to her home. That night, the two made a promise to have dinner together tomorrow night. Worried that his appearance might change again, Wu Jin stays up all night. The next day, he takes Yisu to a music room where they listen to Ramirez's guitar melody. Both Yisu and Wu Jin love the time they spend together. That night, Wu Jin takes Yisu to his workshop again to enjoy dinner. They both later agree to meet each other again the next night. So once again, Wu Jin stays up all night to make sure his appearance doesn't change. The next day, he takes Yisu to his mom's shop where she purchases a similar ring. That night, after making a promise to meet again and have breakfast together tomorrow, Wu Jin walks Yisu home and kisses her. However, due to the fatigue, because he hasn't been sleeping for two days, Wu Jin dozes off on the train. He lost his handsome face and woke up as an old bald man. As his appearance changes, he can't show up the next morning. He then realizes that he can't have a normal life and he decides to disappear from Yisu's life. Before he disappears, he makes a table that can resonate with music, a table Yisu's always wanted and sends it to her workplace. However, Wu Jin can't help living without her. He then applies as an intern in Yisu's furniture studio under a girl's alias, Han Chai Kyung. Gathering enough courage to tell Yisu about his peculiar condition, Wu Jin takes Yi Su to his house and tells her the truth. He tells her that his appearance keeps changing every day after he wakes up. Wu Jin also shows Yi Su videos so that she can believe him. However, Yi Su freaks out and leaves. Day by day passed until Yi Su finally is willing to give Wu Jin another chance to prove his peculiar condition. She decides to give him a visit, to sleep with him so that she can see the transformation with her own eyes. This time, Wu Jin appears as a Japanese woman who can't speak Korean. They have a brief talk before sleeping. The next day, Yisu gets a chance to understand his different lifestyle, learning that Wu Jin owns a different outfit to accommodate his condition. She also sees the transformation herself since Wu Jin wakes up as a Japanese man. After knowing the truth, Yisu and Wu Jin start dating. She comes to his place from time to time and they take pictures together with Wu Jin's different appearances. She has seen him as a middle-aged man, a woman, and even as a kid. One day, she admits to Wu Jin that she has to get used to his scent and touch since she probably won't recognize his changing appearances. He then assures her that he will be the one who is gonna find her so she won't lose him. One day, during Yi Su's company party, her boss brings the topic of her boyfriend up, confronting Yi Su about why he doesn't come to accompany her to the party. Meanwhile, Wu Jin is struggling. He can't show up because he is a grandma. Yi Su's boss then shares her concern that Yi Su's co-workers keep seeing her going out with different men. Somehow, after a brief sleep, Wu Jin can change his appearance as a hot young man and appear at the party with Sang Baek. He and Yisu later manage to sneak out of the party and they share a passionate night. 
Yisu also starts to appear in every Wujin's videos, stating how happy they are together. One day, Wujin takes Yisu to meet his mother. Wujin's mom tells Yisu that she doesn't want her to get hurt for loving his son. His peculiar condition will make their relationship tough. The next day, she gets scared and mad for not being able to recognize Wujin among people in the street. She doesn't know how he will look that day and it makes her insecure. However, she then manages to forgive him for scaring her. Yisu sleeps in Wujin place that night so that she could be the first to see his new appearance the next day. That day, when Sangbek comes with a lot of food to Wujin's place, Wujin tells him his intention to marry Yisu so that they can live together forever. Starting from that day, he has been working hard to design and make the ring he will use to propose to Yisu. On the other hand, Yisu's mental and physical condition doesn't look good. She loses her focus at work, often forgets a few things, and relies heavily on medicine to get through the day. When her boss confronts her about this, she assures her that nothing happens and she just doesn't sleep properly these days. Yisu's boss knows that it must be related to her boyfriend. Once again, she shares her concern about how people keep saying that Yisu sees different men every day. The same day, when Yisu meets Wujin, Wujin tells her his intention to marry her. She doesn't like that idea at all, and tells him that she needs more time to adjust to his peculiar condition. She finally tells him honestly that it has always been very challenging for her to see different faces every day. It is also revealed later that Yisu has been seeing a psychiatrist to cope with her stress, anxiety, and insomnia. All in all, she feels like she has been seeing strangers every day, and admits that although she can remember the days they spent together, she can't remember his appearance. While driving Yisu home, she tells Wujin that she feels dizzy. Yisu then passes out after consuming her medicine. Wujin takes her to the hospital where he finds out that Yisu has been taking medication because of him. The pressure of being with him gives her pressure. She has been very stressed about it but says nothing to him. Later, Wujin visits his mom only to learn that his dad has a similar condition. His mom admits that what happened to Yisu also happened to her a long time ago. His mom is afraid that she won't ever find Wujin's dad if something bad happens to him. It stressed her out. That's why Wujin's dad chose to leave them. Then, during the snowy night, Wujin comes to meet Yisu. He tells her to break up with him. Like what his dad has done before, Wujin also chooses to leave Yisu so she can recover and be healthier. Despite her sadness, Yisu accepts Wujin's decision. Wujin makes her an accustomed chair as their farewell gift. They both then move on and get through their days like usual. Wujin's disappearance helps Yisu recover, mentally and physically, but she struggles to live without him and still misses him every day. One day, Yisu's boss shows her a potential new furniture brand from the Czech Republic. She then is asked to find out who the designer is. Yisu recognizes the pattern of design and has a feeling that it must be Wu Jin's work. Her visit to ALX Studio then confirms her assumptions as she sees some furniture being shipped from the Czech Republic. Meanwhile, in the Czech Republic, Wu Jin still lives his peculiar life like usual. He still wakes up in different bodies every morning but somehow finds the solution to adjust to his new lifestyle. He is still making furniture and now building another new furniture brand named LEA. After a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her dad about the meaning of growing old together with someone, Yisu decides to go to the Czech to find Wujin. She meets Wujin, with a completely new face but he pretends not to know her. Yisu then holds his hand, a gesture that is familiar to them while they were still dating, stating how much he means to her. She tells him that she still has feelings for him and that she wants to live a life with him. Following her confession, Wujin asks Yisu to marry him, he uses the same ring he once crafted for proposing to Yisu. She accepts the proposal, saying that it's his inside that makes her fall in love with him, not his appearance. What do you think about the movie, peepers? Leave your comments below. Subscribe to this channel for more movie recaps. Please like and turn on notifications to support this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.